You try being any woman. All of the things. All of the things that are prescribed as aspirational, like, I don't know, beauty and intelligence and all these things. They're gonna find a way to make your life worse. It's like, I can't, oof. Maybe it's not even just women, maybe it's everyone, but there are people that hate people. There are people that resent people just on the virtue that they are happy about resentment. Oh, but people who can't find, oh no, I was about to say, people who can't find happiness are preventing themselves from finding happiness, but I think that that's also a reductive view. It's become, it's been becoming very important to me lately to be aware of like what, just how privileged a position I speak from and how much time I have had to think and how little time most people will not be allowed to have to think and, and what tools so many people will not be given because the people around them don't have access to those tools or the people that do have access to those tools that they have access to don't want to share those tools. I think that a lot of things are weaponized. Um, I'm speaking a lot of nonsense lately because I feel that I'm in my, I'm in a pupa state. <laughs> I told someone I was, I was, uh, mid-metamorphosis at the moment, so I'm granting myself a lot of grace. I am, um, you know, these bangs are fine. <laughs> Life is so good. Life is really good when you have a really good community. I can't believe it. Crazy to say it, but. work it took to just find a community that is radically accepting and interested and and were mutually enthusiastic there was a lot of isolation and judgment and and like real trials to get through getting to that and i feel i can't believe i'm so happy that i never resigned myself to being satisfied in a friend group where i always felt like an outsider and I also do think that people who are maybe, I don't, wanna, I don't know if I want to say ostracized in society, but people who are othered, a lot of people who are othered are some of the most compelling people to talk to, I think. It's like people who question things, maybe. people who do not conform or people who do not see the value in conforming <sighs> it's it's really special though it's i used to get so upset about people that had died that I never got to have a conversation with, like musicians and writers and stuff where I had read their, their thoughts, I'd seen their art, and it really, it got something that I could relate to, which is like, I mean, that's what makes an artist great, is that they, I think, aspire to write something that everyone can relate to on that, that truly gripping deep level. But anyway, there were a lot of people that I was really sad that I never got to meet. And I was starting to believe that, like, every person that I could ever be understood by or every person that I could ever care to know meaningfully was dead. Like, I was like, I can't, like, what am I doing? I can't relate to anyone that's alive right now. And now I've met all these people and I feel like I'm talking to a bunch of, like, 
awesome ghosts. <laughs> oh, it's really, it's so unusual. Okay, so now this, uh, <laughs> this cannabis is special. But I was, I've been thinking in a silly kind of way lately. I used to think if I could realize I died, then I would be a lot nicer. Um, no, but I was, I was thinking about like, what if this is heaven? <laughs> I mean, like, I just, I'm like, hmm, I it's not. Everything is all perspective, yada, yada, which is a scary line to toe it's a scary thing to consider i feel like you could lose yourself very easily but there is also a set reality <sighs> that is shared experiences that is community it is so important to have people that reassure and validate your existence and life is so sad and small for so many people i think to watch content that does not engage people's intellect um, become the common denominator like the the thing that people relate to each other each other on is like currently sanitized superhero cinema that is unabashedly capitalist it's it's just it's this industry and it's like so <sighs> It's weird to watch that industry flourish because a lot of the source material is so artful and people do get enraged about how, how much it differs from the source material a lot of the time. But now it's just, it's just become a genre of cliche and very little artistry. And I think that people make an effort at artistry in that genre but there's such a financial aspect of it and there are so many executives at play that no no even a good director's artistic vision is going to be the product that they intended to make and i don't know it's i don't know it's this it's this super it's this super money motivated empire that i think has taken over cinema and it's really weird, and I, it seems really evil. <laughs> anyway, oh yeah. So yeah, anyway, I'm, I am in a, in a talking nonsense kind of era. But that's okay. Um, <laughs> one of my silly little delusions that I had the other day was, I was like, who gives a fuck what this big, strange Barbie doll walking around does? So I have this like weird confidence that I'm like yeah whatever <laughs> such is life <sighs> how <laughs> a friend of mine I've I've become obsessed with the band Pavement. And I talked to a friend of mine recently who grew up with a lot of friends who listened to Pavement but never did. And she said, the first thing she said was, I'm not a Pavement head, which I, I also consider myself to be a Pavement head and I'm not sure if that's the official name, but I, it feels like a real connection that we both consider fans of Pavement to be called Pavement heads. Thank you.